Good morning, my name is Damien Ivory. I run a small RSP called Lontel, uh, providing services on the MBN. Today I want to talk about the Ookla speed rankings. Ookla are the company that uh, produce speedtest.net, uh, which many of us use to test the speeds of our connections. Uh, what they do is, uh, uh, every quarter I believe, they add up all the uh, uh, speed tests and uh, rank them according to which country they come from um, uh, to give a, a sort of average. We have uh, slipped, I think, another three places uh, to number 62nd uh, with an average speed or an average test speed of uh, some uh, 30, uh, 38 uh, megabits per second. Now, is this important uh, and what does it really mean? So, it doesn't actually tell us what the capabilities of the MBN network are. Uh, despite what people say that uh, uh, because the MBN has been rolling out the uh, inferior copper, uh, that somehow this is responsible for these global speed rankings. The answer is that it is, but only partly. Because what they're actually measuring is the speeds, not only that people are getting, but also what they ordered. So, in other words, everybody could be on fibre to the premises, but if they only ordered a 25 megabit or a 50 megabit service, then that is the average that we would get. Doesn't matter that the fact that we'd all be on fibre, we would still get those same results. So it's actually telling us that people aren't buying higher speeds. Now, why would that be? Well, essentially there are two reasons why people don't buy faster speeds. Uh, firstly, uh, it could be that it's uh, just too expensive. Uh, for them because of their household budget they would actually like to keep the cost of their internet connection down but it could also be as people have been pointing out uh, because of the capabilities of their line so if your line is only capable of uh, 40 megabits or 30 megabits you're not going to buy a speed above 50 there's just no point because you're not going to get it and in fact uh, uh, this has been the subject of some ACCC investigations is RSPs selling services that uh, people can't get so the, the issue is that people are not buying the higher speeds, which is a real problem for MBN because MBN actually charge different rates for different speeds and they want people to buy the higher speeds so that they can incre increase their revenue. Now their revenue is typically measured as a thing called average, average revenue per user, uh, colloquially ARPU. Now what they're saying is that the average uh, amount of money they're getting for each connection uh, is whatever the figure is uh, that is reported. Their current average revenue is uh, seems to be stuck around about uh, $42 uh, where they actually need to get it up to $52. Actually I think it might have gone up to, uh, to $43 now. So because MBN does not have access to sell the higher speeds, i.e. the ones above 100, and in many cases they can't even sell the 100 speed, then they are unable to get that revenue that they would have had on the fibre of the premises. Uh, and so this is how the multi-technology mix has um, affected uh, their revenue. I also want to talk a little bit about averages. Mitch Firefield is very, very uh, uh, frequently said words the effect of uh, uh, the average or more than X percentage can get 50 megabits, more than X percentage can get 100 megabits. Well that's a bit like saying the government building a building and then saying well we haven't put wheelchair access in but don't worry 98.2% uh, of the population can access this building. Well, that's fine, but what happens if you happen to be the person who needs has a wheelchair and wants to get into that building? So they've excluded you. And it's a bit the same with the multi-technology mix. If you happen to get a slow speed and you want a higher speed, and I'm not going to get into uh, the government's moralising about what speed you need, uh, which for a, a right-wing government is kind of odd, given they always want to push everybody's freedom, but there's nothing you can do about it. Well, aside from sorting out your in-house house wiring and the like, but if you are more than a certain distance from the node, that's it, that's what you get. It's a bit like 
building a pool. Now, this is a public pool. Do you design that pool for the average user or do you build it for the people you would like to aspire to use it? So our Olympic swimmers. So do you, what depth do you have, what length do you have and the like? And it could be very reasonably argued, well, the average user only needs so much depth, so much length. Why do we need to spend all this money to make it an Olympic-sized swimming pool? Well, the answer is, is because we actually, as a society, want to encourage people to do things special, do things at the edge. And I would argue it's the same in our business world. We want to encourage companies either to move here or to set up that are going to be using a lot of bandwidth, that are going to be needing a lot of speed. Maybe they're doing video processing, maybe they're doing engineering and moving large files around. Uh, they can no longer do it. They either have to not do it, i.e. not set up the company, or they move to a different country. So by changing to the multi-technology mix, we have actually removed all the opportunities for people to do things different. Now when people think, do things different, that's where jobs get created. That's where new industries are set up. And I think this is one of the, uh, the really big issues for our economy, is that we have, by catering to what the average person needs, we've missed out on all the people who, uh, would, who want more than the average and have good reason to want more than the average. The other problem with fibre to the node is that it's been called a lottery. You don't know what speed you're going to get until you actually connect to it. And once you're connected to it, aside from sorting out your in-house wiring, uh, there really is not a lot you can do about it. And the trouble is, is that you have no way of predicting that. It could literally come down to how far you are from the node. And until they start sort of putting in a concrete pillar, you don't even know. If you compare that with other situations where we have choices, around what we do. We can either live in the city and we can have access to a lot of services, hospitals, theatres, uh, good water, good, uh, good electricity and the like. We know that's the case when we look in the city. We could also move to the bush. There are plenty of reasons why people want to move to the bush. It's a quieter lifestyle, there's less traffic. Uh, but we accept that maybe there won't be electricity. Maybe there won't be town water and we have to have uh, uh, tank water. Uh, we also accept the fact that the internet may not be so good. But we don't expect this randomly within a town. We, because we, when we make that choice, we know that that's going to be the case in advance, and so we make our choices accordingly. But now we're in this situation where there could be some houses that get a really good speed and some houses that get a really poor speed, and we don't know, and we can't change our buying decisions. I'm very much waiting for the point where uh, the quality of the internet connection uh, changes the value of the property. Uh, I certainly know friends of mine who, when they're searching for a property, one of their uh, key criteria is, is it connected to the fibre of the premises? I don't believe we've seen any big difference in property prices, but I believe it will happen. So that's the fundamental problem with the multi-technology mix, is they've catered for the average and they've missed out on the opportunities that the uh, new technology would provide. And I think this is something that has both affected our society and it will certainly affect MBN Co's revenue because of course they get to, they are now unable to sell those high speed uh, and certainly higher price services on the MBN. Okay, that's it for today and uh, leave, the, uh, leave any comments uh, below and I'll see you in the next video.